What's going on everybody, it's Conte here with another video. In today's tutorial we are going to have a look at the transform tools available inside the DaVinci Resolve video editing software. At present I have no video content open in this particular project, so I'm going to go to File and Import File, Import Media. Once you've selected the relevant video file to import, it should appear to the left inside your media pool window. I'm going to left click and drag the video file down to my timeline. The blue and green sections indicate where on your particular timeline this video clip will appear. I want it to appear at the very beginning, so I'm going to drag it to the far left. The top bit of the visuals. The bottom bit in green is the audio. When I left click on the blue section, you can see that it takes me to the video section underneath Inspector. Now under Video, underneath Composite, you can see Transform. The first option under Transform is Zoom. And for this we have X and Y. If I were to change one of these numbers manually by left clicking inside the box with a number, holding my left mouse button down and dragging it either to the right or the left, both X and Y contain the same values. Using a smaller number results in a zoom out effect applied to your video clip. The larger your number inside these X and Y boxes, the further the software will zoom in to your video clip. Using the red line down on the timeline here, notice how when I scroll across, the same zoom effect is applied to the whole video clip. Should you wish to reset values inside any of these properties here, simply left click on the curled arrow icon here and they're both back to the initial 1.000 values. Take note of the chain link here. If I left click on it and go to increase now the X value, notice how the Y value remains what it was originally and only the X value changes. These two can be connected again simply by left clicking on the chain link icon and then when one value is increased, so is the other. Increasing X increases the width and increasing the value in Y increases the height. The second tool down is position. In this particular example, let's say that we want the chair in the middle of this particular video clip. What I can do is modify the X and Y coordinates in this position sector here in order to place the chair in the middle. If I left click inside the X value box, hold my mouse button down and drag to the right, you can see that the video clip also goes in the same direction. In order to move the chair downwards, I'm going to left click inside the Y box here, drag to the left and the video clip image will shift down on your screen. Using the zoom tools previously covered, I'm going to increase the number of both X and Y so that the aspect ratio of the whole image remains the same, it doesn't appear stretched and I can finally place this chair in the middle of my video clip. The third option, rotation angle, speaks for itself. If you drag to the right, it goes anti-clockwise, go left, it rotates clockwise. An anchor point is basically the point inside your video file which the main video clip is positioned relative to. So for example here the anchor point is 0 and 0 and when I zoom in you can see that the software is zooming in to the very centre of this particular canvas here marked with the coordinates 0 and 0. If I were to change the X coordinates for the anchor point to 500 though and zoom in once again using X and Y you can see that the anchor point is now to the side. 
when I use the rotation angle option as well, you can see that the video clip actually rotates around this anchor point also. The fifth option, pitch. And your both enable angle conversions of your video clip. The first flip option creates a horizontal mirror reflection effect. And the second flip option shows the same video clip but is inverted vertically. When an effect is applied in the transfer window, it is set to the entire video clip here. I have not cut any sections of this particular video clip file. Each effect set inside this particular window here will apply to everything highlighted in red here. What if you wanted different transformation states as the video goes along? For example, how could you make the clip zoom in and out inside the first couple of seconds here? The red line is at the very beginning of the video clip, zero seconds. I'm going to left click on this diamond icon here to create a keyframe. A keyframe basically marks the start and the end of a transition inside a particular video file. If I then drag this red line to the one second mark, I'm going to increase the zoom of X and Y by two. If I go back to the start of my video again and press play, you can see that the zoom effect is applied as the video goes on. What I want to have happen now after the one second mark is for the video to zoom back out when it reaches two seconds. I'm going to left click and drag the red line to the right on my timeline and I'm now at two seconds. You can tell that a keyframe has been applied by the arrow symbol which appears next to the diamond symbol here. I'm going to change the X and Y coordinates back to 1 as it was in the original state. And then when I drag the red line back to the start again to press play, the video should zoom in up to the 1 second mark and then zoom out up to the 2 second mark. Transform effects can also be applied to other layers on your timeline. In this example here, I've inserted a black rectangle picture with the .png file extension using the same options before, file, import file and import media. What I'm going to do here is show you how I can use this picture to censor a particular part of the video clip here. If I left click and drag the black rectangle file down to my timeline, at present the black rectangle is obscuring too much of the video clip. So what I'm therefore going to do with the black rectangle layer selected is decrease the number in the zoom X section. Let's say if I want to use the black rectangle to censor the flower pot in the distance there, just above it, I'm going to increase the Y value alongside position so that the black rectangle moves up slightly. And I'm also going to zoom out slightly more so that it only covers the actual flower pot itself. I'm going to change the X coordinates to minus figures so that the black rectangle moves to the side there. And I'm going to left click on the chain link icon here and decrease the zoom X. I'm also going to decrease the Y coordinates so that it becomes a square. Thank you very much for watching. Hope that video was useful to you. To support this channel, please like and subscribe. Join me soon for another tutorial. Take care.